This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. So is modelling a skill you learned? Um, I think it's quite intuitive. It's, it, if, I wouldn't instinctively call it a skill, but I think you do get better at it from practising, right. but in quite a natural way. Okay. Without, it's not something you can study. You just kind of so who, do it. If you think it's a skill that you learn, you think it's self-taught, or do you think you're taught it? Are there certain photographers that teach you how to model? I think only by virtue of of an accident of kind of responding yeah. to of kind of responding to guidance and listening and remembering and yeah. kind of finding your way, not in a kind of normal teacher way. Because I know there's a, a chap called Jay Alexander. I think he's quite well known now. Who um, teaches modelling? The teaches models to walk. Okay. That was the only one I, thing I ever had a lesson on was to right. walk. Oh, really? So one of the first shows I did, my agency got some of the other girls to right. teach some of the younger girls. Um, but again, that was quite straightforward and then you just really just learn from experiencing yeah. it and watching the people around you and yeah. again it becomes quite, I think, intuitive. So there is some feeling that I get from working with models when they first start and are working throughout their careers, that they learn the skill of it, that mm -hmm. they learn the sort of, and then sometimes it manifests itself just in how they are on the set, like whether they're patient or not, mm -hmm. whether they understand the process of it. And it often seems to be after they work with Stephen Mizell. Oh really? They get better. He's very good at, um, at finding the nuances in yeah. how you kind of, yeah, how it makes you very kind of body conscious and face conscious because he's right. noticing all the details and reflecting on them to change elements. Right. And he also sometimes uses a mirror, I don't know if you know this. Yes, I know. And the girls can use that to yeah. angle their body as such. Yeah. So it makes sense. Right. Could you tell That's me what's a cool picture, huh? Um, that, if I'm right, is Italian Vogue mm -hmm. from when I was 15 and it was with Stephen Mizell. And I had. I didn't really realise that he was such a big deal photographer <laughs> and um, the influence that the impact that this would have on my career. Um, I'd worked with him earlier in the year for the Anna Sweet campaign and then yeah. he'd asked me to come back to, it was in New York, to New York um, to shoot this story and I remember being quite anxious about the fact I was taking two or three days off school and yeah. <laughs> that was my main pro because they ran over, they didn't finish shooting everything they wanted in the day yeah. and they asked if I'd come back the next day which was when I was supposed to be flying back home and that was a big kind of drama of like, oh, I was lying to my school and saying that I was sick um, of whether I could <laughs> take the extra day or not. I think how, I did. How, how tolerant was your school with your modelling? My first one until I was 16 were completely, un, like complete, had no tolerance whatsoever. Really? Um, they only ever let me have one day off while I was there that was for the McQueen show in Paris that was dancing, the, oh, beautiful show, the yeah. Michael Clark one. Which was when we did a photograph from. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, and they let me do that on the basis that it was dance as opposed to right. modelling. I had to kind of, yeah. uh, they put the noses off a bit to modelling. Um, I actually got on my first job was for Elle magazine to go to Hawaii for a week with my sister. Yeah. And I thought that was like the most exciting proposition I'd ever heard in my life. I'd yeah. never gone further than Paris and, or France and, um, or Europe, maybe a little bit further than France, uh, Europe. And um, I never left Europe and that was, and all I wanted to do was travel and my school said no. So I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> and then my next school, from when I was 16 to 18, yeah. I went specifically saying to them um, that I was modelling and they had to kind of work with that if right. I was going to go there and they were, they were wonderful. Yeah. And let me, I took off probably about a third or half the time in the end. Um, so, so going back to our picture here, Stephen's picture. So Pat McGraw was doing the makeup. Mm -hmm. I can't remember hair, it's probably Guido, but I might be wrong. Um, and it was extensions. And, and so I remember Pat kept coming over with her big powder puff and adding more, yeah. more white and more makeup. And they'd always be like, it's genius, it's genius, it's heaven. They were very over, like, excited. Is Stephen direct or does Stephen... Yeah, is Stephen, he quiet? Direct. So yeah Stephen direct. So Stephen's the voice you hear? Yeah, I'm doing whatever Stephen asks for, basically. So if he says, look up, I look up and he says, raise your arm a little bit, I raise my arm a little bit, bend down a little bit. Like, yeah. it's very, quite particular, actually, his directions. Um, and he's got a very gentle way of directing. Right. I think You're I was excited, like, cause, because you could yeah. tell from their excitement, they were really yeah, excited. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is, I think this is a series of pictures which is credited for launching your career internationally. Yeah. Um, how do people get you to assume a certain 
pose? Some are more particular than others. Stephen is very particular. The Adam Penn was one of the most particular, I've ever, I think the most particular really? I've ever worked with, yeah. Um, and I then can't imagine, sorry to interrupt you, I can't imagine Irving Penn striking a similar physical pose to you. Did he do that? Oh, what? No, 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 not in a mirror way. Right, okay, that's what I I'm know, and neither does Stephen, sorry. Stephen right. wasn't mirroring that picture, that pose. He's, I think, sitting usually behind the camera, but he's just giving very specific directions based on what he can see. And obviously I can't see myself. I mean, sometimes it was a mirror, but for the most part, you don't normally see yourself. So you're kind of letting the photographer be your mirror yeah. in a way to tell you what to do. And what are you hearing? Um, I'm hearing him directing. Mm -hmm. I've got a wind blower on me, yeah. so I'm feeling that. And I remember Pat coming over at one point and saying something about being genius and starting to realize that this actually might be quite important, yeah. <laughs> an important event in, uh, in at least in our small, small fashion world. <laughs> um, so we're still with Stephen. Mm, I remember that. So tell me a little bit about this. And in terms of working with other girls. So Bess um, was in LA, just outside LA. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they'd asked me, it was just after I'd been doing the Anna Sui, I just opened the Anna Sui sh show in New York, if I remember right. And this is why I was still at this bloody school that was being so difficult. So this was on me being sick week. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I must and have started to work it out eventually. Too well, late. particularly in this instance, because Guido had asked to cut my hair into a fringe, into a, a short fringe. And she didn't say short, into a fringe, yeah. bangs, and to dye it a bit more red. And again, I ummed and ahmed. I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, but I said yes. And then I went and then they cut this very, very, very short fringe and made it very red. And I, it would, I was so, I mean, now I look at it and I'm like, oh, it looks really cool, actually. Um, mm. But at the time, I was 15 and having that hair just made me feel really like a weirdo. And yeah. I remember sitting in the back of a taxi in LA, thinking, like, being so paranoid that everyone was just yeah. staring at me because I had this crazy hair. And I was totally freaked out that my school were now going to uh, suspend me. And so I went in, I'm sorry, I'm sidetracking from the shoot, but yeah. it's quite a funny story. I ended up, I was by myself in LA, which wasn't a particularly good idea at the time. Mm. Um, and I ended up trying to get industrial uh, dishwashing liquid to get this dye out my hair, because I was told that was the quickest way to wash it out. Who told you that? I can't remember, but somebody. And so in the hotel I was staying at, I asked them, and it turned out they steam washed all their dishes. Right. And that they sent me to a local supermarket. And trying yeah. to walk in LA, as you know, is a disaster. So yeah. I was walking around in LA trying to find um, dishwashing uh, liquid, which didn't really work actually when I found it. So it was all quite dramatic. But um, on the shoot, it was boiling hot. I ended up nearly fainting actually on this particular one because of wearing. Um, I was wearing, actually stopped wearing fur not long after this. I started saying no, but on this shoot I was yeah. wearing fur in the outside near the desert, in the Nevada desert, I think. And um, yeah, I just remember it being very, very, very hot. And um, you're with who there? Missy and Jessica Stan. And how is the sort of, how do you find getting on with other models? Is it, do you, if it's a, a shoot you're doing, but you know that other models are going to be there? Other people you think, oh, I hope so and so is there. Well, the people you have, uh, they're not going to be. Do you, how does it work? Had, I never had anyone that I had really strong negative feelings towards. Um, yeah. Some more positive than others, yeah. like all human beings. Um, Missy and Stan were both a bit older than me, particularly right. Missy, and, and had a just a very nice relationship with me. Jessica was doing a lot at the same time as me, um, Stan. And so we worked together a lot and formed, I'd say, quite a nice friendship. Yeah. through that period. Um, I saw her recently and was really happy to, you know, I ran into her yeah. in New York, really happy to see her. Um, I remember on this shoot that it was supposed to be for the, I was supposed to be on the cover and they ended up doing the cover shot with just Jessica and Missy. Yeah. Which is one of those kind of things that just naturally is fine, it happens. But yeah. at the time had a lot more, like yeah. now means nothing to me. But at the time meant a lot and I remember being very upset about that in a very quiet way. <laughs> <laughs> So do you ever get used to seeing And I remember time? Jessica actually, sorry to interrupt, being topless in the in the van, just hanging out, waiting for us to go. And I was just thinking, it, it, she just seemed like really, like really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like this older girl just walking around topless, not caring. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to ask you from that is, do you ever get 
completely used to seeing your own image all over the place. Do you disassociate from it? Yeah, so you're I walking, disassociate from it. Right. So you're walking down Bond Street and you one there, one there, one there, one there. Just ignore just, it. Just goes by. Yeah. Do you ever have moments where you just stand and look and think, oh, that was that? Does that ever touch you? Um, I remember when I was on the, all the buses for Topshop. Yeah. That was the beginning. I had a moment where I was on a motorbike going across Marble Arch and seeing yeah. like three or four buses and my image can big on yeah. them and just being like, whoa, what the hell happened, you know? <laughs> but that was because it was like quite early on. Now I don't think if I saw a picture somewhere, I just kind of like, oh, that's funny, that's me. <laughs>